what a Cajun cruise, one I'll never forget. Of course, we went out and caught our crawfish, now I've got to cook them. Of course, first thing you do, first you make a roux. Very good. Started making my roux here, and it's really not a very dark, dark roux. It's kind of like, a, it's not blonde either, but it's, it's light brown. So to this, let me put this on, okay. I'm gonna add some onions. Of course, we're gonna saute all this together because we are making a crawfish pie today. Mm -hmm. They have the jambalaya, so we'll make the crawfish pie. Very good, okay. Now, put this in here and celery. Onions, bell pepper, and celery. Very good. All right, and you saute this real good together. Kind of like, let's cook it all together. Like this. Mmm, my gosh, it smells good. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've got this done. You don't want to overdo your vegetables, remember? Just so they're shiny. You don't want to make them limp. Just kind of give them a little uh, shiny look of them, about them, and they're done. Okay, and this is parsley. I like quite a bit of parsley in this myself. And, of course, and tops. Cook all this together. How can you go wrong with wonderful Louisiana crawfish and all the other great ingredients? Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Of course, this is how it's gonna look before you add your crawfish. Okay, let me add my crawfish tails, which have been blanched and peeled. Now remember, that if you keep your crawfish in the freezer for over a year, well, a year, you uh, need to rinse them because, the, of course, the fat will probably get rancid on you. Okay. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Lower this slightly. Good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Then I'm going to salt and pepper them. Season them according to your taste because remember, Cajun cooking is according to your taste. People think it's supposed to be hot, but uh, if you add too much seasoning, it destroys the flavor of the main ingredient. You don't want to do that. You want to enhance that flavor. Okay, some Louisiana hot sauce. That yoink. Mix that up. Mm hmm. Wow. Yes, beautiful. I just put it over rice and eat it like this, but you know, they asked, my son in law asked me to make a crawfish pie with this, so, and of course, to that, I'll add a dab of water. Yeah. Okay. Mix this together. Mm hmm. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Yes. This is basically how I make my etouffees, but although I don't let my roux get that dark, I'm a little bit lighter than this. Now, okay, this is, this is pretty, looks pretty good to me. So, now uh, just in case that you may have added a little bit too much water to your crawfish, you, because it will make water after, they will, you know, draw water after they've been cooking, you could thicken this with cornstarch. But if you do have to do that, you uh, mix your cornstarch in with wine, with all white wine, and then it'll give it more flavor rather than just with water. Okay, next, of course, crawfish pie to a rice farmer is never completed without rice. So I'm gonna add rice to mine. Some people don't care that to do that, but I do, so of course I have to promote my rice, and I like to think this is on record rice, because I was born and raised on a rice farm, and then I married a rice farmer. Yes, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Very, very good. Man, mm -hmm, mm. almost smell and 
through that TV, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have to, of course, you can't have a pie without a pie shell. So let's see where we're going to do, what we're going to do with this. Okay. Now, there's here. Okay, now I've already been baking all night, just making these pie shells. And this is, I've used the regular pie shell like you do a pie. And this is an apparatus, a little gadget I love. Every kitchen needs one of these if you like to bake a pie. You just set it on top here and it cooks. And it, just in case, now, I mean, it may not happen, but just in case you have some spills, it will naturally go in this little pan and it won't mess your oven up. You won't have a mess to clean up. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Oh, these crawfish, of course, crawfish is so good. I just cook them different ways. A crawfish boil is very typical of a Cajun home, a Cajun entertainment. And when they're in season, everybody just loves to have a big crawfish ball to entertain their friends and their family, too. Okay. Now, on top of this, this is a double pie crust. Okay, just unroll this. Of course, now another hint that I've been told would be good to do is that you could use the uh, rolling pin and roll your uh, pie shell on it, and then when you want to unroll it, you just go ahead and unroll the whole, uh, the whole rolling pin, just unroll it and put it real neatly. Miss Rita McCoy has uh, taught that to me, my friend, and uh, I value her opinion because she's a wonderful cook. But now, well, you know, I'm kind of old-fashioned too. I have a hard time changing my ways, even though it might be a better way. Okay. Now you just fold over your shell, your pie crust, just and make sure that you've got your edges are are tight. You just squeeze it, just squeeze it real tight with your fingers. See, I. Some people use forks to do this with, but I like to use my fingers. Just, I can handle it better, okay? Then you can pinch it. See, and it make a pretty edge. Yeah, this way, good. All righty. Yeah, nice and mm-hmm. It's gonna be just as tasty as it's gonna look good. All righty. Next, we're gonna take this to the oven. We're going to bake it at 350 for about a half hour or until the pie crust gets a beautiful golden brown. Now, sometimes it depends on your oven. You may want to bake it at 375 because some ovens are lower than others. So, well, while that bakes, I'm going to show you how to make a dessert that will turn you upside down.